Hello, Algebra 1 students. Today we're going to be going over the Unit uh, 9 review. Um, so uh, if you can, before going over this video, why don't you go through the review and answer the questions that you know, and um, just watch the video for the questions that you're not sure about, and um, or to just check your answers. Um, at this point, you should have completed the rest of the packet and uh, just the review to finish. and. Hopefully, if you follow along and it makes sense, then the test shouldn't be too hard. Um, I also want to point out that everything I write down, you should be writing down. That way, um, you get the fullest understanding, and also you get the practice of actually doing the problems as well. So let me go ahead and uh, present my screen here, and uh, we can start. The uh, review starts on page 53, so go ahead and go there if you're not there already. And we start working these out. So hopefully you remember like what the square root means. So basically the square root um, basically is saying what number times itself will give you 100. So hopefully you know that one already. It's 10. 10 times 10 is 100. Now if you look at the next one, this one has a little 3 on the root. So this one's not a square root. It's what we call a cube root. So you're asking what number to the power of 3 will give you 1,000. In other words, one number times itself times itself would give you 1,000. And hopefully you can find out that that's 10, right? If you did 10 times 10 times 10, well, that would give you 1,000. So the cube root of 1,000 is 10. <clears throat> can you guess what the sixth root of 1 million is? Well, this would also be 10. Okay, so basically, oh, it doesn't look like a 10. 10. So basically, uh, 10 to the power of 6 will give you 1 million. Basically, 10 to whatever power, um, in this case, the power of 6, would create a number with a 1 and 6 zeros. 10 to the power of whatever would give you a 1 with that many zeros. What about this one? 27, third root of 27. So what number times itself times itself would give you 27? So hopefully you'd see that that's three, right? Three times three times three is 27. I'm gonna let you see if you can figure out this one on your own. So what number times itself times itself would give you 64? See if you can figure that out. The next one here is a square root of 81 n to the sixth. So you can kind of treat these like separate, but the square root of 81 is 9, because 9 times 9 is 81. And then when you do the square root of n to the sixth, basically, um, that divides the power by whatever the root is. So in this case, it's a square root. So we're going to divide that power by 2, and that gives you n to the power of 3, which should make sense because n to the power of 3 times itself would give you n to the power of 6. And you could always double check, do this thing times itself, and you should get this thing. Question two. On a recent quiz, Mike broke down the square root of 63 into a factor tree and got 7, square root of 3, as the most simplified answer. Break down and simplify the square root of 63 yourself and show Mike what he may have done incorrectly. So we... Hopefully you've seen throughout the rest of this unit how to break down a square root, but we want to use a factor tree. So it mentions a factor tree. In other words, we're looking for two things that multiply to give me 63. So what two things multiply to give you 63? Well, you could do 3 times 21. That's one option. Now from here, does the 3 break down any farther? Well, no. 3 is prime. So we're going to go and circle that. The 21, however, does break down farther. This would break down to 3 times 7. Now, since, since these are both prime, we're going to go and circle those. So the square root of 63, you could rewrite it as the square root of 3 times 3 times 7. Okay. Notice those multiply back together to get 63. 
Now, when you're simplifying a square root, what you're looking for is doubles. So we're looking for any doubles that are in the square root. In this case, there's a double three. So any doubles inside the square root will come out as singles. The seven has nobody to double with, so it remains inside. So the correct simplification of the square root of 63 is three times the square root of seven. And you could always check on your calculator. So if you did the square root of 63, um, it gives you 7.9. And if you did three times the square root of seven, it should give you the exact same thing. Okay, so that's one way you could always check. If you plug this in the calculator and then plug this in the calculator, you should get the same decimal because they should be equal. Now, uh, Mike got seven square root of three. So that's incorrect. So he pulled out the seven and left the three inside. So you see how that's a mistake? I want you to briefly explain here um, what Mike did wrong, basically that he pulled out the seven instead of the three um, and show the correct answer like that. Okay. All right. Question three, simplify and or solve the following expressions and equations. Okay. So when it says solve, that's only going to apply to actually the last one where it says solve for x. Um, in order to solve something, you really need a, an equal sign somewhere. But in these ones, we can definitely simplify these. So what we're going to do is we're going to simplify both these square roots. So first, the square root of 24. And again, we're going to use a factor tree. So what two things multiply to give you 24? Well, you could say 2 times 12, then break that down. The 2 is prime. It doesn't break down. 12 is, you could say, 3 times 4. 3 is prime. And the 4 breaks down to 2 times 2. So the square root of 24, we could rewrite this as... the square root of 2 times 2 times 2, three twos, and a 3. Any doubles get pulled out, so in this case, double twos. Those get pulled out. And you're left with a 2 times 3 in here, which is 6. So the square root of 24, you could rewrite it as 2 square root of 6. Now in this problem, there's already a 3 out here. So this 3 will multiply with whatever gets pulled out, in this case a 2. So this will be 6 square root of 6. Okay. We're going to do a similar thing and simplify the square root of 54. So for 54, we could say that that's 2 times um, 27. 27 becomes 9 times 3, and the 9 can break down to 3 times 3. So in this case, the square root of 54 becomes, so the square root of 54 will become the square root of 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. In this case, you can pull out a double 3. Those come out. So that's 3 square root of, and there's six inside, two and a three, two times three, six. Now there's already a four outside for this, right, for this problem, so plus, and the four will multiply with the three that gets pulled out. So that's gonna be 12 square root of six. Well, notice these have the same square root. If they have the same type of square root, you can combine those as like terms. So six square root of sixes, plus 12 more square root of sixes gives you a total of 18 square root of sixes. Okay. For part B, we're going to have to simplify this square root, the square root of 54, which we already did that, right? It simplifies to 3 square root of 6. The 3 is going to multiply with the 5 that's already out here, so that's 15 square root of 6. 
minus 2 square root of 6. Okay, they are like terms, right? They both have square root of 6, same type of square root. So you can call that 13 square root of 6. Now this next one, notice that both sides have a square root. If both sides have a square root like this, what you can do, what I'd suggest doing, is canceling out the square root by squaring both sides. So when you square a square root, that cancels it. Okay, But we have to square both sides of the equation because whatever we do to one side, we do on the other. Now in this case, we want to square both sides anyway because they both have a square root. And... Um, so the square root with the squared cancels that. Now on the left side, this 5 also gets squared because it, it gets squared by this. So that's 25. And then for the square root of x, the square root and square cancel, leaving you with just x. So 25x is what's on this side. Here, there's nothing outside the square root. So the square root and square just cancel. And from here, we would just solve for x like we would normally, getting our x's together on the same side of the equation and solving for x. So here we have x's on both sides, so I'm going to do subtract 10x, both sides of the equation. That way, we only have x's on the left side. So that'll give us 15x equals 60. Divide both sides by 15 to get x by itself. x equals 60 divided by 15 is 4. And you could always check your answer by plugging it back in. These two sides of the equation should be equal when you plug that in. Number four, use the square root function on Xbox advertising from earlier in this unit, which appears in the box below, to answer the following question. So we have this function, f of x equals 27 times the square root of 5x plus 53. <clears throat> if the predicted amount of Xbox consoles sold, which is the Y, um, when here they say Y, there is no Y here, but that's the same as saying F of X. So F of X is your Y, essentially. So we're going to have our, our this side of the function, this F of X, equals 323. So it'll be 323 equals, and then this. Then what is the predicted number of months that the ad appeared in the newspaper, x? So we're going to replace this left side of the equation, y, with 323. And we're going to just rewrite the rest of the function over here. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to try to solve for x. In other words, get x by itself. Now the first thing I would do is generally you want to get rid of whatever's adding or subtracting from both sides. So we're going to go ahead and subtract 53 here, canceling it out on the right, and subtract 53 on the left as well, because whatever you do on one side of the equation, you have to do on the other. So our the right side now is just 27 square root of 5x. And then we subtract those, so 323 minus 53 gives you 270. To get rid of this 27, well, this is 27 times the square root of 5x. So since these are multiplied, you can divide to cancel it. So divide both sides by 27, giving us 10 here on the left equals the square root of 5x. Well, now, in order to get at what's in the square root, you have to square both sides. So to cancel out the square root, we're going to square both sides. So squaring this left side, 10 squared, that means 10 times 10. Well, that's 100. Over here, the square root and squared cancel, leaving us with 5x. To get x by itself, divide by 5. 100 divided by 5 is 20, so 20 is the value of x, 20 months. So if they continue the ad for 20 months, they can expect to sell 
323 Xboxes. Okay. This next set, it says number five, determine whether the, um, determine whether the each of following sets, uh, okay, that was not worded correctly. Um, determine whether these sets are triples of Pythagorean triples and thus the possible measures of a right triangle. Use the formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared to prove your answer, making sure to show your work, write yes or no on the line next to each triple. So basically what, we're, what we want to check is would these three numbers, do these three numbers fit in this equation? Okay, so basically we're going to replace a, b, and c with the numbers here, and we're going to check to see if it actually produces an equal uh, equation. So... Um, one thing to keep in mind is that the C is always the largest number. So in our case, for this first one, A, the C will be 10. It's the largest one. And the A and the B will be the other two smaller numbers, the 6 and 8 in this case. So we're going to replace A with 6. So that's going to be 6. Notice it says A squared, so that's going to be 6 squared, plus B squared, so that's going to be 8 squared. And we want to see, does that equal... 10 squared. So I'm going to put a little question mark over this equals because we don't know if it's equal yet. But let's go ahead and work this out. And if it is equal, then we would put a yes here. So this is 6 squared. That's 36. Plus 8 squared. That's 64. Does that equal 10 squared? Well, 10 squared is 100. So 63 plus six or 36 plus 64 is 100. So yes, these are equal, right? So since these are equal, we're going to go and put yes here. And what that means is that these three, uh, if these are three side lengths, then if you form them into a triangle, they would make a right triangle. Okay. So a right triangle, imagine this, maybe with one side, six, eight, and this would be 10. And this would make a right triangle, meaning that this is a right angle here. Okay. So yes, these three side lengths uh, would form a right triangle. Okay. So um, if it doesn't equal, if this ends up not being equal to each other, then you'd put no. Okay. So I want you to try the next two on your own. One of these will be uh, a yes, and one of these will be a no. I'm pretty sure. Let me just double check that. Yeah, so one of these will be a yes, one of these will be a no. Um, in other words, one of these will have equals and, and one of these will not be equal when you do this. Okay. So go ahead and give these a try. Uh, I'm pretty sure you could just, just follow this example like we did here. Okay. And that's the end of the review. Okay. So not a long one there, uh, but I hope it made sense. And if it did make sense, then you should be able to do pretty well on the test. Um, and um, if you have any questions, you could always uh, feel, feel free to email me. It's my email is ttriggg at ofy dot org. All right. Well, with that, I will see you next time. Take care. Good luck on the test.